Are you struggling with the CPA exam because your course failed to fit your learning style? I'm Darius Clark of I-75 CPA Review, where the right teacher makes all the difference. A big part of the exam is financial management, and let's start with the concept known as operating leverage. To understand operating leverage, we need to know the difference between fixed and variable operating costs. Fixed operating costs do not change with the level of sales, such as rent, salaries of permanent staff, and also insurance premiums. These are fixed operating costs, and whether you sell or you don't have any sales, you still have to incur these costs because they're fixed. Variable operating costs, they change directly with the level of sales. Think of sales commissions. If your business model involves your salespeople getting paid commissions from every sale, then those sales commissions are variable costs because they change directly with the level of sales. If you don't have any sales, you won't have any sales commissions. But look at fixed costs. If you don't have any sales, but you have sales salaries paid to permanent staff every month, you're still going to have an obligation to pay those fixed costs. So while fixed costs do not change with the level of sales, variable costs do. They change directly with the level of sales such as sales commissions and also shipping or delivery expense. If you have a sale, you're going to incur the delivery expense. If you don't have a sale, no delivery expense. So now that we know the difference between fixed and variable operating costs, what's up with operating leverage? Operating leverage refers to the proportion of a company's fixed operating costs to its variable operating costs. Operating leverage measures how sensitive a company's operating income is to changes in sales. Operating leverage helps to understand how changes in sales will impact the company's operating income. We know that for any company, changes in sales will impact operating income, but operating leverage helps us determine to what extent will changes in sales impact the company's operating income. So they'll tell us on the exam that in year one, operating income was $100,000. And in year two, it was $120,000. That's an increase of 20%. Over that same period, sales unit volume went from 500,000 units to 550,000 units, an increase of 10%. So a 10% increase in unit volume led to a 20% increase in operating income. The degree of operating leverage is calculated like this. The percent change in operating income, that 20%, divided by the percent change in sales, 10%. The degree of operating leverage is 2. And a DOL of 2 means that for every 1% increase in sales unit volume, the operating income will increase by 2%. All right, let's look at a similar example. We're going to change only one number and watch how different the degree of operating leverage will be. So now we have a company with an EBIT of 100,000 again in year one, but this year, the current year, instead of being 120,000, the EBIT is 160,000. That's a 60% increase, but at the same time, sales increased from 500,000 units in year one to the same 550,000 units in year two. So the sales unit volume is the same as the previous example, but look at the impact on the operating income. The degree of operating leverage is calculated by taking the percentage change in operating income, 60%, and dividing by the percent change in sales, 10%. And now the degree of operating leverage is 6. A DOL of 6 means that for every 1% increase in sales, the operating income will increase by 6%, which is considered very high operating leverage and indicates that the company is sensitive to a change in sales. On the exam, they might give you this and ask you to calculate the degree of operating leverage. So we'll solve it the same way. The unit volume increased by 5%, 5,000 over 100,000. The EBIT, as a result of that 5% increase in unit volume, increased by 50%, going from 200,000 in year one to 300,000 in year two. So we just take the percentage change in operating income, 50%, and divide by the percentage change in sales, 5%, and we get 10 for our degree of operating leverage. Not 10%, but 10. 
This means that as sales go up 5%, like they did, the operating income goes up 50%. That's considered very high operating leverage. The problem, though, is the reverse is also true. A reduction of just 5% in unit sales will lead to a 50% decrease in operating income. Why does a company have high operating leverage and what are the implications? Well, if a company has a high proportion of fixed operating costs, they pay salaries instead of commissions, it means that a small change in sales can lead to a significant change in operating income. This can be beneficial in times of increasing sales and growth, but dangerous if sales are declining because those fixed operating costs like salaries still have to get paid. Think of a health care facility like a hospital. Hospitals have high operating leverage because doctors and nurses are on salary. They're not on commission. So those salaries still have to get paid even if the hospital is having trouble collecting. Now, low operating leverage, if a company has a higher proportion of variable operating costs, then changes in sales will have a smaller impact on operating income. So you need to remember that high operating leverage leads to large fluctuations in operating income from year to year. The good news is more significant profits in times of growth if you have high operating leverage, but it can also amplify losses during downturns. And then low operating leverage provides more stability, but might lead to smaller gains during periods of growth. The problem with operating leverage is that companies don't often have a choice. We said healthcare industry, they have high operating leverage because they have such high fixed costs. Doctors and nurses, they're on salary. But auto sales and real estate sales, they have low operating leverage because sales tend to be commission rather than salary. So high operating leverage means high risk, but also high potential reward. Low operating leverage means lower risk, but also lower potential reward. Why is it high risk in a high operating leverage? Because those fixed costs have to get paid. Why is it high reward, high operating leverage? Because once you do cover the doctors and nurses salaries, the rest of the costs are variable and there's not as many variable costs if you have high operating leverage. So the rest of the sales, once you cover the fixed costs, go right to the bottom line. Low operating leverage is considered lower risk because there's not as many fixed costs that have to get paid, but also lower reward because every time you have sales, you have to share the income with commissions, delivery, variable costs never end. They vary directly with sales. So every time you have a sale, you'll have variable costs. And if you have low operating leverage, that means your variable costs are a larger proportion of your total cost. All right, let's try this question. A company with a high degree of operating leverage is likely to experience what? A stable operating income? No, low operating leverage, you would have more of a stable operating income. B, large fluctuations in operating income? Yes. C, constant revenue? No, nobody really is guaranteed constant revenue. Doesn't matter what your operating leverage is. D, low fixed costs? No. High fixed costs. If you have high operating leverage, you have high fixed costs, not low. So we got to go with letter B. A high degree of operating leverage implies that a small change in sales can result in large fluctuations in operating income due to the high proportion of fixed costs to the total cost. All right, a firm's degree of operating leverage is calculated by which of the following formulas? A, percent change in sales divided by the percent change in EBIT. Is A right? Is that how we calculate the degree of operating leverage? No. B, percent change in EBIT divided by a percent change in sales. Yeah, that's more like it. Letter B is correct. C, percent change in fixed costs divided by total fixed costs. No. D, percent change in variable costs divided by total variable costs. No. Letter B is correct. A firm's degree of operating leverage is calculated by taking the percentage change in EBIT and dividing by percentage change in sales. So if a firm experiences a 33% increase in EBIT, as a result of an 11% increase in sales, let's say, the firm's operating leverage is three. And when a firm has a high operating leverage, any number greater than one, a small increase in revenue can lead to a large increase in profits since fixed costs remain the same. But we know the opposite is also true. A small decrease in revenue could lead to a large decrease in profit 
if the firm has high operating leverage. And this question asks for the formula to calculate degree of operating leverage, and it's the percentage change in EBIT divided by the percentage change in sales. Letter B is correct. Which of the following would likely have a higher degree of operating leverage? A, a company. And if you think you know, leave me the answer in the comments section. And remember to like and subscribe because it really helps the channel out a lot. And if you need more help with leverage or any part of the CPA bar exam, go to i75cpareview.com and get yourself on the right road. Click CPA Review, then Bar, and then you can choose between the Bar Complete Monthly Subscription or the Bar Cram Course. If your exam's coming up within a week or two, that's when you get the cram course. Otherwise, get the full complete I-75 bar and use it as a standalone course. No other materials needed. I'll leave a link in the description so you could get yourself on I-75 with me, Darius Clark, because the right teacher makes all the difference.